anchors up sales tool. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing tonight, Kyle? I am doing pretty well here, Jared. How are you doing? Doing all right. Uh, Chop would like us to know that uh, he has new internet. Let's go. When we, when we do those, uh, when when we do the uh, social screens during the season that are totally legal, um, Chop will be able to participate. I feel I feel good <laughs> about that. Feel good about that. Yeah, absolutely. If you want right, to learn on, more about hold that, on. hit hit up hit up the uh, hit up our Discord here. Wait, fall camp, fall camps, fall camp is right around the corner, Jared. It is. It, it is Neutra- actually hold on, starting. Hold on. hold on, new tradition, good tradition. All right, please continue. It's actually starting this week. Fall camp is starting this week. I just want you to just want everybody just to sink that, let that sink in and realize. We are that much closer. We are one month away from opening kickoff. Yeah, we are, aren't we? So in what, in what, be, in what better way, what better way than this episode here, Jared? Yeah. A, a general, a preview for the general audience of the Ohio State 2024 football program. Yeah, uh, this is this is not the first time we've done this episode. Is this the second third time we've done this episode i forget um but i thought it was a good idea kyle and i thought it was a good idea that we do an episode that is for you know a lot of people are you you know you're a casual fan or maybe you had a really busy summer um maybe you're from a a whole other fan base and you just want to say hey what's so how's that going to be like this year? If you're someone who follows all of the news week in, week out, this episode's probably not going to be for you. I'm just going to let you know that right off the top. Of the, uh, we're going to be damn good. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, Chop. All right, that's the end of the episode. Yeah, See you guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up for a podcast. You got a TikTok. Um, yeah, the... Uh, it's going to be, but anyway, we're not going to, we're not going to, <laughs> we're not going to, we're not going to go there yet. What we're, we're, I'm still previewing here. This is for other fan bases. This is for the, like I said, the people who are casual fans, people who dip out during the off season and they, they show back up again in August. This is, this is who this episode is for. And like I said, if you follow, if you follow the program, if you listen to this podcast week in, week out, this episode is probably not going to be for you. There's going to be a lot of rehashing here. You're probably not going to get any new info here. I'm just, just letting you know right off the top of the show. This is what this, this is what this episode is. Where do you want to start, Kyle? Do you want to start where oh, the season question. ended last year? Because um, if we rewind. <laughs> no. <laughs> well Chop in the weeks no. in, yeah in the weeks after if you rewind Ohio State um not feeling great didn't mean to rhyme just basically didn't even bother to show up in a bowl game versus Missouri missed the playoffs uh, at that point, Kyle McCord had already announced he was transferring out. And, you know, a lot of people were calling for Ryan Day's job. Because Ohio State had once again lost to Michigan and Michigan had asterisks, won the national title and people in Columbus weren't feeling all that great. Now. Ohio State's had a great offseason. So if that's where you hopped out, oh boy, do I have some news for you. Oh boy, do I have some news for you. Because Ohio State's had a really good offseason. Now, Kyle McCord leaves. Okay. But also, like, in in case you are a super casual, I don't know if y'all heard, but Nick Saban retired. Did he? 
Yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah. Did not know that. Nick Saban retired. Um, so there was a bit of an exodus from Alabama. And Ohio State brings in one Mr. Caleb Downs. Now, Caleb Downs was a excellent, excellent safety coming out of high school. Ohio State was very much involved in the recruitment, but he went to Alabama instead. Well, Nick Saban leaves and he says to himself, you know what? Nah, I'm going to go to Ohio State. And in that time in between, he had one of the best freshman seasons you've seen a defensive player have in a very long time. Mm hmm. Uh, so Ohio State, and and no offense to Josh Proctor, who's on his, who you know is is now in the NFL, um, gets a huge upgrade at the field safety position, um, but also Ohio State brings in Quinshawn Judkins, who is arguably the best running back in the country. Um, arguably, he's 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 in the top five. Yeah, he's, he's up there. Yeah. From, from Ole Miss. From Ole Miss. Um, and all of that, I mean, and also you bring in Will Howard, quarterback from Kansas State, to fill in for departing Kyle McCord, to compete with returning Devin Brown. As we sit here right now, we actually don't even necessarily know who's the starting quarterback. I think most... Um, most people who follow Ohio State closely at this point will tell you it's Will Howard. Mm -hmm. But that's not official. Uh, as Kyle said, camp is still a week away. And officially speaking, it is an open battle still. But a lot of people feel like it's Will Howard. Now, if you're an Ohio State fan and maybe you don't pay a lot of attention to Kansas State, who the hell is Will Howard? Will Howard's a not a highly recruited guy. Um not necessarily uh he's a guy that like Kansas State kept trying to replace but kept not wanting to be replaced and kept winning the starting job um Will Howard is Ohio State's backup quarterback I I I don't I don't know and I don't think so but I'm but I don't know um now if you're an Ohio State fan uh, the past few years you got real used to watching Ohio State with quarterbacks like C.J. Stroud, uh, with Justin Fields, Dwayne Haskins, big, strong arm. I uh, Julian, I I I I don't agree, Job. I don't agree. Um, not not so much Kyle, who Kyle McCord was supposed to be, but you got used to like these pro style quarterbacks. And I really don't think that Will Howard or Devin Brown are going to be that. I think what you can potentially see out of Will Howard is something more akin to JT Barrett for better, mm -hmm. for better and for worse, but also for better. Big leadership guy. Great read option guy. Good, really good runner not your quintessential NFL quarterback. I <laughs> chopped it in like that comparison, hopefully freshman year JT. Um, I, he's not going to be like senior JT with JT shoulder being what it was. I'll tell you that he's going to be a better quarterback than that. But if we're going for a rough comparison, he's closer to JT Barrett. Then that's because that's because Urban ran him 20, 25, 30 times a game. That's why he regressed every year. It, but anyway, we're, we're not going to re we're not going to relitigate that. Um, point being is that he, a, a Will Howard led offense is going to be closer to JT Barrett than it is CJ Stroud for better and worse. Kyle, I thought, now those are the additions. Those are like the big additions. They also bring in Will uh, Kick Merrick uh, from Ohio. Um, 
Seth McLaughlin uh, will probably be the starting center uh, from Alabama. These are your big additions. But sometimes Kyle addition is simply not subtracting. And mm-hmm. Jack Sawyer led a bit of a campaign because Ohio State, if you go back to like last offseason, I was telling you, well, Ohio State better win this year because they're going to suck in 2024 because everyone's going to leave. And Jack Sawyer is uh, publicly being credited in many cases as the guy who sort of led a rallying cry to bring the guys back. We already talked about Judkins. Um, Kyle, talk a, talk a bit about who's coming back, who we didn't necessarily expect to get back this year. Um, for those that say, uh, that's played um, video games. There's a there's a video there's a video game that came out a while ago called Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and it's set and their their clear no thing where, on there. No idea it says, where you're going with this. <laughs> who's back, Jared? Everybody is back. Everybody's back. <laughs> Not everybody. Everybody's back. Not Almost everybody. everybody. Almost everybody. <laughs> We did not get uh, Marvin I was, Harrison Jr. back. We, we, yes, I mean when you when you go top five overall, you, yeah, yes, yeah. You, you you should you should you should um, cash that check there. But but all the all the yeah, but basically everyone is back. Yeah, I mean you you get critical critical players back. Henderson is back. Yeah, Ibuka is back. Yeah, uh, Jeremich and Sawyer. Uh, JT Tuumalau is back as well. Burke, huge and um, huge, huge, huge. Those are probably the the huge names that that's all come back. Um, Hamilton, I mean is Donovan back Jackson. As well. Donovan Jackson. Donovan huge. Jackson. Yep. Non loss. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jordan Hancock, a big non loss. Ransom's a huge non loss. Yeah, Ransom as well. Yep. Can't forget um, about Ransom too. Ohio State lost almost nobody from the defense. They 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 do lose Steel Chambers. They do lose Josh Proctor. Um, you know, so they have to replace their linebackers. And they and again, no offense to Josh Proctor, but they made a huge <laughs> upgrade, uh, bring in Caleb Downs to replace Josh Proctor. Um, biggest loss, Tony Alford. Not so much. I think, I think Ohio State's going to be fine. Um, also, there was a bit of offseason drama, Kyle, with the offensive coordinator. <laughs> um, Ryan Day did decide that he needed an offensive coordinator. He, he was, he couldn't run the offense by himself as the head coach. He needed to bring mm-hmm. in a legit offensive coordinator. And do, do do we tell the whole story or do we just fast forward to Chip Kelly? I think what matters, I there was a lot more to it than that. But at the end of the day, Ohio State gets Chip Kelly, the former head coach at UCLA, the former head not, coach not, not, yeah, not, for yeah, the Philadelphia just, just, Eagles, the former for the head 49ers, coach for the 49ers, for the, 49ers for, the or, for Oregon. A head coach for the past 15 years. It wasn't just like, oh, a couple of years, it, it, it didn't pan out. 15 years, including yeah. two different NFL teams, to take an offensive coordinator job. Yeah, we also go to Eugene with Chip Kelly. We'll get to the schedule. Don't worry. We'll get to the schedule. <laughs> um, uh, so there were yeah, some coaching I, changes. The biggest, the, the most notable change, of course, Um. Ohio State bringing in Chip Kelly to be the offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach. Um, that that's the biggest change. They made some other changes as well, but that's that's your highlight change in the in in the coaching arena. Um, overall, Kyle, I don't know if we could have asked for a better off season. Um. I know that there were some big name quarterbacks out there that maybe some people wanted yeah. that Ohio well, State didn't. Well, um, before you go, before you go into that, uh, yes, Chip Kelly, the the big news uh, for coaches coming into Ohio State. But you think about the brilliant minds 
that's in the coaching staff here at Ohio State. Obviously, yep. Chip Kelly you just mentioned. But let's not forget, um, in his third year, Jim Knowles, how, how he's yeah. turned this defense around. He's... He's he's got he's got this defense running the way that he envisions this defense, and you return pretty much almost all of your production on the defensive side. Yeah, I'm just looking. I'm just looking real quick here. Yeah, it's really high. You're returning like roughly about seventy percent of your productivity on the uh, on the defense side. There, yeah, yeah. it's and when they were when they were ranked. Number two in points per game, number one in points per play, uh, number one in passing defense, yards attempts. Um, they were top 30 in rushing defense. I expect that to, to improve um, drastically <laughs> this year with all the returning uh, defensive players here. Uh, Jim Knowles is a kid in a candy store this year with, with this defense. And, 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 Chip Kelly too, and Chip Kelly on the offense too. And he's had Denzel Burke on the field for three years. He's had Jack Sawyer on the field for three years. He's had JT Tui Molau on the field for three years. Oh, and, th- and coming into Ransom the portal. And Hancock um, on the field for three years. These, these, these are third year under Knowles players, which I, I don't think can be overlooked. And then, and then you got downs that just... Coming, coming back, coming to Ohio, then to the to really strengthen this defense even more. Just crazy, crazy. I know, I know, you're going to, you're going to hear a lot of comparisons to like the uh, like the Michigan Michigan team last year, where they were like all in. They had so many super seniors and all that. I would say it doesn't really have any really that many like super seniors, but a lot of veterans, a lot of veterans this year, a lot of snaps. Their, a lot of snaps, yeah. There's a lot of snaps returning on defense. Uh, but I I mean, screw the super seniors. These guys, Michigan had a bunch of sixth-year guys, but they had a bunch of three-year, sixth-year, a bunch of three-star, sixth-year guys. Iowa State has a bunch of five-star, four-year guys. Um, yeah. All right, Kyle, uh, do you want to go into... We're talking about the players. You let's you want to talk about the depth chart specifically, or do you sure. want to talk yeah. about the schedule? You want to do the depth chart? We have visuals. Yeah, for let's, the depth chart. Yeah, let's do the let's do the depth chart. But before we get there, we're going to take a quick ad break here. Uh, so um, yeah, as soon as we're back from this break, uh, we will cover the the uh, de- offense. Sorry, the offensive side. We can start wherever, but yeah. Do we have any former special ops people assisting our coaching staff? You're giving uh, Connor Stallions, by the way, we're back for the break. Uh, You're giving Connor Stallions, uh, I think he was, I mean, no no offense to any Navy folk listening, but I think he was just a Navy guy. I don't, I don't think he was, I think you're giving him a lot of credit calling him special ops. Hey man, I, I know you're an army guy, but let's not be calling names down on the chat. Um, Hey, you, you, you can't, you definitely can't say that, Zach. You definitely can't say that. Um, All right, let's, let's move on to the offense and why I said the offense, because you have them on the board here, Jared. So <laughs> sure. Uh, we talked about Will Howyer. Well, this is, this is, by the way, is not an official depth chart. This yep. is a, uh, Kyle and I back in April, I think, um, Back in April, did a um, my family all Marines or excuse me all Army. I don't know why I substituted that. Uh, yeah, okay, that's that's fine. But you know, it's one thing if Chop does it since he was a service member, but it's a, it's a different thing when he did it because you're not. That's all I'm saying. But we move forward. Um, this is the depth chart. This is not well. I should say this is not the depth chart. This is not the official depth chart. Back in April, Kyle and I made a depth chart, um, and this is mostly that. Um, we did have TC Caffey on this depth chart when we first made it. He has since, uh, if you don't know, he's a, what year is he? Um, um, let me 
pull that up. He is uh, uh second year. This uh, yeah. th- this would have been his third year. This would have he's a two year. This would have been his third year. Uh, but he uh had a knee injury. He will not be playing this year. He is a walk on. Um, and but he was I think in many respects. I think most people thought he was going to be the third running back despite his walk-on status. He would have, and probably now, hey, by the way, Kyle, now 105 scholarships. Well, I guess that's Not starting next, next year. year. That's, that's starting, starting next, next year. year. Yep. But I, I'm just saying TC Caffey's TC Caffey's only going to be a, he's only going to be a walk-on for so much longer. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so, With him out, probably. July, as soon as that July 1st come, rolls around. <laughs> I, next year i i maybe even before that he's uh maybe even before that yeah yeah they're ohio state's pretty much under the scholarship limit right now can you check the uh scholarship channel in the discord discord.thesloopcast.com 81 um currently at 81 they can still give him one is all i'm saying um probably james peoples i assume is now the third running back um That being said, as long as Trey Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins stay healthy, Mm -hmm. I I don't necessarily think you'll see a ton of James Peoples. Um, I don't know if they'll try and preserve his red shirt or not. Um, If either Henderson or Judkins get a even long ish term injury, probably not. We'll we'll see how it plays out. But uh, you will notice and. I try not to go full Urban Meyer with this. There are not ands all over the depth chart. I, I have one ampersand on the depth chart. I have it next to Trey and Judkins. They are both starters. I, and I don't think we, we don't need to spend time. They're both going to start. One's going to start one game. The other is going to start the next game. They're both going to get carries. We don't need to worry about that. I don't want to see Ohio State continue the quarterback. Uh, Quarterback is not running back. We need we need a quarterback. We need a quarterback. So let's let's pray that we don't uh, continue the quarterback battle into the season again this year. Um, But and again, I I think it's going to be Will Howard, not official. This depth chart, not official. Just Kyle and I's opinion. Yep. Um. I think I think the big I think the big question here is the is the offensive line. We, yeah, we we talked about it last year that the offensive line needs to play better if the quarterback is going to do well. It, and it do as well as we wanted them to do. Are are they going to be any better than last year to give potentially Will Howard as a starting quarterback uh, enough time to do his thing? Yeah, and I, I do think. Seth McLaughlin's an upgrade at center or an upgrade for the interior. Hinsman bumps over to right guard. Donovan, ja- the, the combination of Donovan Jackson, Seth McLaughlin and Carson Hinsman's an upgrade over the interior of the line last year. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's that's how I'm that. going yeah. to say that. Um, <clears throat> Josh Simmons had a rough start for Ohio State at the beginning of last year, got Better as the season went. If, you know, I, I said a little bit ago that Ohio State had like the best offseason you could hope for. And I said, you know, there are some other quarterbacks maybe out there that at least some fans wanted. I think a lot of fans, Kyle and I included, were uh, really hoping that you were going to get a an offensive tackle to add to the depth chart. Um, that did not happen. They're quite frankly, weren't because they don't need bodies at tackle. Oh, I, it's something I said a lot during the off season and a lot in the discord server. What Ohio state did not need is bodies at tackle. What Ohio state needed was a starter at tackle. So anytime a tackle stud, when anytime a tackle hit the transfer portal, people would be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, should Ohio State go get this guy? The only two tackles that entered the portal this year 
who would have been absolute starters at Ohio State, ended up back with the teams that they that they were with last year. One of them, one of them more eventful than the other. But we don't need to talk about Caden Proctor. Point is, is that there weren't any stud, bona fide Ohio State level tackles who touched the portal this year. Ohio State could have gone out there and gotten some depth guys, some guys who maybe could have competed. But that's not what they that's not what they needed. They they have depth at tackle. They needed a starter and a, a like I said, someone who was absolutely going to walk in and take Josh Fryer's job didn't change teams. A couple guys mm-hmm. entered the portal. They went back to the teams they started with. This is your offensive line. It's Josh Simmons at left tackle, Donovan Jackson at left guard, Seth McLaughlin at center, Car- Carson Hinsman at right guard, Josh Fryer at right tackle. We're hearing a lot of good things about Josh Fryer. He's lost some weight. He's had a really good offseason. I do think this offense this year is going to better cater to his skills and limitations. I think there's going to be a much more run-heavy offense, which leans into his strength. And we just can't... And <laughs> I almost read what you said, Chop. And what how do I want to say this? Chip Kelly is much better at designing plays to cater to the strengths and weaknesses, specifically in the run game, the strengths and weaknesses of his offensive line. Chip Kelly is a master of drawing up run plays. I think we're going to see Ohio State, at the very least, be a considerably better offensive running team this year. You have a running threat at quarterback, which as Urban Meyer loved to tell us, made the math better. It it made the math even. It's a math thing. The quarterback has to be a threat. If the quarterback's a run to threat, he's just as good as a blocker. It evens up the math. Yep. Meyer loved to tell us that. Well, Will Howard is, is trestle ball back. No, but urban balls back. For this year, at least. Now, you know, next year we'll talk. Might, might be back to more, a more Ryan day style offense in 2025 but for for 2024 this is going to look i my suspicion this is going to look a lot more like an urban meyer offense you're going to see some read option uh i think you're going to see a lot of read option i think what we're going to see a lot of this year is we're going to see a lot of uh yeah a lot more running but more so we're going to see a lot more of the um uh 12 package here we're going to see a lot of um two tight end packages here potentially uh you know they did like I said, they went out and got will kick merrick even though you know g scott jr if again if you look at the depth chart on the screen if you're watching this on youtube if you're not watching this on youtube we also upload to youtube if you're watching this on youtube and you want us to download you want to download us to your phone we're also on your podcast feeds hi youtube um i want thurman um Thurman, if Thurman wants to play this year, I think he's going to have to be a better run blocker than Will Kick Merrick. Or mm, someone's going yeah. to get hurt, of course. Hurt so, people getting hurt is always a thing. Um So G Scott, G Scott's your your number one tight end. And um uh, as Jared mentioned, I've got got Will in the portal here. Uh so I th- I think those two are going to be your 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 solid two tight ends this year, which is going to really help out um uh really help out the blocking not not going to be so much the year of the tight end this year i know i know here from a, the discord from a passing, we always 
standpoint. We always love the year of the tight end, but this year it's the year of the tight end for blocking. Well, okay, well, but again, Kyle, remember we're talking to a casual audience here. They they need to be reminded of the fact, or just told maybe. G. Scott Jr. is a, is a is a wide receiver. I mean, he yes, yes. he he came out of high school as a wide receiver anyway he's added some muscles since then um he he can run some patterns and catch some balls too i i wouldn't underestimate g scott jr in the passing game especially as kyle points out they do a lot of 12 formation which if we're talking to casuals here if you have two tight ends on the field if you have two tight ends on the field G. Scott Jr. is going to have to be a wide receiver. Yes. I mean, last last year, he only had 10 catches and one touchdown last year. But, but Stover but had, never but, left the field. But you had Stover. You had Stover, though. Yes. Stover had maybe the best. If we're talking about complete, like, you know, running and blocking, maybe had the best year any Ohio State tight end has ever had last year. Um. It may have been an all-time season for the tight end position at Ohio State last year. We always joke mm-hmm. about it's the year of the tight end, and then it's never the year of the tight end. Last year, it actually was the year of the tight end. Um, all right, Kyle, we talked about everyone but the wide receivers, which is uh, inarguably the deepest room on the Ohio State. Uh, it, maybe just the Ohio State team but definitely on the offensive side. Um, Yep. There's a lot of conversation out there about who's going to start where. I will tell you this. Your wide receivers, if there's two wide receivers on the field, it's going to be a Mecca Buka and Jeremiah Smith. Those are your two wide receivers at Ohio State. Again, if you're a casual and you're like, who the hell is Jeremiah Smith? He's a true freshman. Doesn't look like a true freshman. Kind of, kind of, kind of, no, kind of reminds me of uh, like Chase Young in a way. I mean, he's he's not bulky like Chase Young, but like when Chase Young came in as a freshman, you're like, he he looks like he's a junior. Yeah, <laughs> Jeremiah Smith looks like he's a been in the system two or three years already as a wide receiver. Like he is, he is. He was on that a, that talented. He was on a recruiting visit last year and took a picture with Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> one of them looked more like the college player than the other. That's and it wasn't time. Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, he's a big, big man. Jeremiah Smith is. Um, you say nope, Tate. I No, you're two wide receivers. Your two wide receivers are Mecca Book and Jeremiah Smith. 100%. Uh, That being said, Ohio State will have three wide receivers on the field. Maybe most of the time, Um, probably most of the time. Um, We have a little more conversation about who that third wide receiver is. And also, we now we have to start talking about who is playing where. If you look at the depth chart we have up on the screen. We have a Mecca Buka. Starting at one of the wide, wide receiver at the, one of the wide positions, right? There's a lot of conversation. He's going to continue to play in the slot this year, and if that happens, you probably see Carnell Tate and Jeremiah Smith as your outside guys with Omeka Abuka in the slot. A lot of people say no, Emeka Buka is going to be on the outside no matter how many wide receivers are on the field. In which case, you might have Brandon Innes or Cardinal Tate in the slot. I mean, that's that's not the one with Marvin Harrison Jr., but no, I mean, I that, that, I gives you, that gives you an idea of what this young man looks like. Um, well, that, 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 I, I appreciate the effort, Kyle, but that doesn't help. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> um, yeah, to me, to me, the four best wide receivers, the, the wide receivers you're going to see the most 
in this order. In, I'm just going to rank the wide receivers one to four for a second. That's what I'm going to do. I can tell you with confidence. Number one's Emeka Buka. Number two is Jeremiah Smith. Number three, Carnell Tate. Number four, Brandon Ennis. Maybe you swap three and four around. They're pretty close. One of them's a better, one of them's a better slot guy. One of them's probably a better outside guy, as you can see laid out in the depth chart over here. Um, but I think those are your four guys on the team. And probably in that order. Although, like I said, some people might fight me on the ordering of those four players, but those are the four wide receivers who are your who you're going to see on the field most. You're going to see Bryson Rogers get on the field. You're going to see Kojo Antwi get on the field. You're going to see a lot of wide receivers throughout the course of the season get on the field. Don't forget about Jaden Ballard. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask about Jaden Ballard. Uh, Jaden Ballard as well. He's a he's a redshirt senior. Yeah. Um, I'll this say year. this. I'll say this, Kyle. Uh, Big Ten media days were last week. Um, yeah, and Ryan Day Ryan called Day, him out. Ryan Day called him out by name as a guy who needs to step up. Well, I, I think I think it was he 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 mentioned other names too, but I think he said Ballard, he, Rogers, and Antwi have to step up step up this fall. Okay, but go listen to it. It's like a guy who is because it's more like a guy who really needs to step up this year is is Jaden Ballard. It is Ballard, yes. And then it was almost like it's almost like Ryan Day realized what he said. And I think he then tried to distribute the blow by throwing some additional names in there. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he was like, oh, I better not just. Oh, man, I just kind of slammed Jaden Ballard there. Let me distribute that. And then he tagged on some additional names. It felt like a pretty direct call out of Jaden Ballard. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say. Our and of specifically Jaden Ballard. Um, um, any, any additional, any additional yeah. comments, concerns here on the offensive side of the ball, Kyle? No, just I, I think this year just expect a lot of a lot of rotation or even maybe even maybe even seeing both running backs. Oh, you're going to um, see both running backs all year. Well, I'm, I was going to say both running backs at once. Oh, at once. You know, I feel like that's one of those things that we always talk about will happen and then never happens, not in any regularity. Um, especially with Caffey Hurt, they're now not very deep at running back. I don't know. I I, I don't know. They really can't go super deep at running back right now. I don't see them with any regularity putting them both on the field at the same time. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Um, Kyle, we're going to move over to the defensive side of the ball, but before we move over to the defensive side of the ball, we're going to do another, this isn't our last ad break. Well, it'll be the last ad break on the podcast feed. If you're all catching this on the Buckeye huddle page. It won't be the last ad break. Uh, but uh yeah let's do an ad break if you want to avoid these ad breaks you can go to patreon.thesloopcast.com uh where you can uh, listen to the audio version of this show completely ad free um you can also visit our t-shirt stores at merch.thesloopcast.com or at um 7071. I, I kyle i don't feel like doing plugs let's just go to the commercial break All right. We got the defense on the screen now. Um, Patreon.thesloopcast.com, Discord.thesloopcast.com. There, I said it. Just just, just go to those places and you'll figure it. You'll figure the rest out later. Um, defensive side of the ball. I have up on the screen a 4 2 5. There's a lot of talk and a lot of conversation that Ohio State. Might not be in a 4-2-5 this year or not 
exclusively. Well, I mean, they're never exclusively in a four two five, but that we might see the base defense switch on occasion to maybe more of a three, three, five. Um, but for right now, we're going to do this depth chart as a four, two, five. Although it'd be interesting to see how this would shift in a, in a three, three, five situation. Um, but that's a different conversation for a different day, I believe. Um, as Kyle was talking about at the beginning of the show, we have a lot of familiar names here. There's a oh. lot of snaps on this defense. You don't have a lot of guys here in their fifth year or in this COVID era, I guess we can call it a lot of 60 year guys, which are pretty common nowadays. Um, not, not a lot of, like I said, not a, not a lot of fifth year, sixth year guys, but a lot of snaps, a whole lot of snaps. You got Denzel Burke with a lot of snaps under his belt. Ty Lake Williams, Jack Sawyer, JT Tui Molau with a lot of snaps under their belt. Ty Hamilton's a older, very experienced oh, guy Hamilton. himself. Uh, David Igbenosin's been playing since he was a freshman, his first year at Ole Miss. He joined Ohio State last year. Lots of snaps under his belt, his second year um, at Ohio State and under Knowles. Um, Sonny Styles will be. I don't, I don't know if this is even official yet, but I think we all it's a if it's not, it's the most open of secrets. Sonny Styles has moved from the safety position to the linebacker position. We're projecting him at the will linebacker. Mm-hmm. Not a hundred percent on that, but that's where we're projecting him to um, the mic position. I think you'll see a mix of uh, a very senior Cody Seinman and a younger, maybe a little bit more athletic, maybe a little bit more. I almost, I almost want to say like CJ Hicks is more pass rush and pass protection. Whereas Cody Simon's a little bit more run stop. Um, so but I think you'll, this is again, I'm going to use this. Is all, I'm only using two ampersands for starting roles. We saw the running backs with the ampersand. I'm using an ampersand here again with the mic with, with Hicks and Simon. I think it'll be highly rotational and high, highly situational. Um, Jordan Hancock, another guy with a ton of snaps under his belt. Caleb Downs only in his second year of college football, first year at Ohio state. Um, uh, well, <laughs> maybe the, uh, not maybe, uh, well, I guess let's you count Sonny styles because of the position change, or if CJ Hicks is on the field, he does not have a ton of game reps, but one of the more inexperienced players on the field, and I'm not worried about it. Uh, Caleb Downs was, I believe if I'm not mistaken, like I think he was the, uh, defensive rookie or defensive freshman player of the year in the sec last year. Um, Definitely made their freshman All American team for sure. I believe made, I almost certain there's no way he did. I don't remember. I don't remember, but there's no way he wasn't like starting safety on the freshman All American national team last year. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, had to have been anonymous across, uh, not anonymous. Um, it, you, you mentioned on the, you mentioned on the uh, unanimous. Often. I I had to get that out unanimous across the board, freshman defensive player. uh, If not in total, then at least at safety. You mentioned like on the offensive side that Ballard kind of needs a step up this year, being a veteran here. I, you could say the same thing with Cody Simon. I I think Cody, Cody showed, showed sparks here and there last year. He's got it. Got to elevate this game as his, his last year at Ohio state here with Cody Simon. He's had a lot of injuries throughout his career yes. at Ohio state. That's yeah, that. Yes. Different situation. I would say, um, 
So yeah, a, a very, very experienced and insanely talented starting 11 for Ohio State. Yes. Um, we talked a bit about the 3-3. Three, three. How does this shift in a 3-3? Three, three? Um, you might basically see Ty Leak move into nose. Ty Hamilton come off of the field. And then you'd see both CJ Hicks and Cody Seinman on the field. And I yep. think that's your three, three. Gosh, I like, I'm, I'm so torn in this because I love, I love both Hamilton and Williams, but I, I feel, I feel that Ohio state will be at its best with a three, three, five this year under, 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 it depends normal on who circumstances. You're under, it depends yeah, on who you're under playing. normal circumstances, yeah. I, I think. I mean, but when, 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 they, when to, they play when they play Michigan at the end of the year, yeah, that mean that'll change two. to like a four two five. Then it just again, it depends upon who you're playing. It's if it's first off, the whole idea, in my opinion, is that you keep them guessing, and that you're multiple, and that you jump back and forth between the two. But yes, if you're playing a run Fair. heavier team you're going to favor the four, two. And if you're pay, playing a pass heavier team, you're going to be favoring the three, three. Mm -hmm. But again, the whole idea is, and you can get away with this because this is such a senior defense, a lot of snaps, a lot of experience on the field. You know, if you had a bunch of first year starters out there, you probably couldn't get away with doing this, but you can, with this defense, switch back and forth between the 4-2 and the 3-3. Three, three. You switch back and forth. You keep them guessing. And quite frankly, if you have, especially if you have CJ Hicks out there, you could run, you could jump back and forth between the 4-2 and the 3-3 three, three with the same personnel on the field. CJ Hicks has shown um, a lot of skill in the pass rushing, uh, in, the, in pass rushing this offseason, uh, throughout the spring camp and whatnot. So you could pretty easily see, again, if it... You, you you run you, he he, walk, he walk, runs up to the line he maybe bumps JT in a tad so now you have Ty Leak at nose you have JT at like a three tech defensive tackle or at least just like a defensive end who's just shade inside instead of shade outside and now CJ Hicks is down on or near the line as your defensive end slash edge rusher slash outside linebacker however you want to phrase it dare I say Leo um, or Jack or whatever. You could, if you have, I, I think you can jump back and forth between the two without changing your personnel a lot. I think is, is basic. That's all I'm really trying to say. Um, you want to talk a bit about the backups, Kyle? Yeah, I think, I think the backups um really. I, I think are are definitely really solid solid here, especially on the. Uh, well, we're really all all over. I'm just yeah, looking all at over. all the, all really the names is. here. Uh, yeah, uh, let's start with the defensive side there. I mean, you got you got Curry. And we're we're and, definitely uh, on the defensive side, Kyle. I'm sorry, the defensive line. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I mean, I, I had line, I had I line you, in, I that, you, I in my you. head, it's and it's yeah. all good. Curry, Jackson, Melton, all three, all three are um, veterans. Been in, been in the system for a while too. Um, I think they can contribute um, when called upon. Uh, I really like them to fill in if if Jack and JT need need a breather there. Uh, I think I think McDonald. We we rarely saw Sawyer or JT leave the field last year. Yeah. I think you see a lot more rotation. I think you see a lot more Caden Curry, Kenyatta Jackson, 
this season. And then you also have um, a really talented um, sophomore this year, uh, Ken McDonald. Uh, I don't yeah. think you're going to see a ton of him, but definitely a name to keep out, uh, keep a, an eye out for. Um, where's number ninety eight? And we we talked I, about. I think um, you this, see a. I think you see a decent amount of him. And, and this and this last one, we talked a, a lot about him too, especially if you listen to any of our recruiting episodes here um, um, a few years ago. Uh, Hiro Kanyu. Uh, was a name that we've mentioned a number of times to who who can uh, fill in for Ty Hamilton when needed. Yeah, and I think he's also pretty versatile in that, again, if you're in a 3-3, I think he's a guy who is is comfortable, you know, either directly over the center or shaded off the center or up on a guard, you know, whether you need him to be a three-tech or a nose tackle uh, I would say here is very versatile in that area. Yeah, I mean, big guy. I mean, six five, six five, three oh five. That's that, that's that's um, offensive tackle <laughs> um, height and weight numbers there. Yeah. Uh, Court Williams, Gabe Powers. Um, your backups for on the linebacker side there linebackers is still kind of a, a little mystery to me about how how they're going to pan out this year uh they took a big step last year really happy to see how um how the linebackers developed last year hopefully they can continue to develop well this year so well, really uh, curious to see, see how it's worth noting why they took a big step up last year and Another change to the defensive coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Gabe, Gabe Powers is still, um, oh, I guess I guess this is his third year. It doesn't feel like this is his third year here. <laughs> but uh, Court Williams is a veteran here, um, a fifth year senior as well. So all of these guys are just veterans who's seen seen the field, who's been Ohio State for, for quite a while. Yeah, I mean... And as I was alluding to earlier, James Laurinaitis joined the coaching staff last year. He, this off season was promoted to being one of the official coaches, one of the official accountable coaches. Um, I think we're already seeing an uptick in um, recruiting in the, in the linebacker room as a result we saw an uptick in the linebacker play last year. Uh, James Laurinaitis is, I, he feels like a young star in the coaching staff for sure. Um, makes me feel very optimistic about where this team's going to be, um, or specifically like where the linebackers are going to be, um, not just this year, but in the years coming forward too. Um, yeah, I I feel pretty optimistic about the future of the linebackers. Um, but, you know, I think it's worth noting, Kyle, we talked about how all these defensive players came back. We were looking at a situation where I think we thought Hero was going to be a starter this year and Caden Curry was going to be a starter this year and Kenyatta Jackson mm -hmm. was going to be a starter this year and that, you know, Jermaine Matthews was going to be a starter this year and we were fine with it we were good with it these are Gabe Powers you know we thought for sure you know maybe not for sure but we thought we probably thought Gabe Powers are going to be starting this year at one point and we were good with it um Malik Hartford at safety you know before Caleb Downs came in we thought pretty sure Malik Hartford was going to start this year and we were good with it like Ohio State has almost an entire starting defense on the bench. Like a really good, young, imperfect, but a really good starting defense sitting on the bench right now. A bunch of really good second and third year players. A couple freshmen thrown in there too. Um, who we, you know, at this point last year, thought we're going to be starters this year and felt good about it 
uh, is not just a very talented and experienced defense, but also an incredibly deep defense. Uh, very. Talk very. a bit about the defensive backs, Kyle. I know I name checked a couple of them, but yeah, Malik Hartford. I feel like he's been. He's been in. I feel like he's been in the. Um, been out of Ohio State for for quite a while now. <laughs> hasn't been, um, but he got a he lot of time been, last it, year. It but feels that way. Feels it does that feel way, that way. He did not play like he got. He got. He got thrown into the defense last year after a few injuries as a true freshman, and mm-hmm. at times looked like a true freshman. But the more yeah. reps he got, the better he looked. Um, yep. And he started to look like a starter. The yep. and then, yeah. I again and, if and obviously you want Caleb Downs. Obviously, obviously, obviously you want Caleb Downs. But I wouldn't have been. And, and also Ransom, like we and Ransom plays the other safety. I don't think Malik Hartford necessarily would fit the mold of the up safety. How, how, how much? How much? But it's it's amazing looking at where we're at right Malik, now. I'm just trying like, to say if Malik Hartford was a starter this year, I'd be totally cool with it. Yeah. He is a starter at, at the end of at the in January when we're looking at the team. You're like, oh, Ransom's going to be gone. Man, how are our safeties going to look here? Uh, you mentioned Hartford. Yep, yeah, it's solid, solid safety there. But who's going to be the other safety? And then Ransom comes back. There solves the issue. Caleb Downs comes back. Upgrade. That's like this is transfers in. But yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Um, I, if the if the safeties this year were Ransom and Hartford, we would be talking about depth issues at safety. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we'd be concerned about those two as starters at all. Correct. We would Correct. we would be talking about depth issues for sure. Um, walk on Inky Jones um, from Steubenville, if I'm, I believe so. Is it just another guy in the safety room who I think could see some time this year? Got a lot of time in the spring due to some injuries. Um, what was the last name? Inky Jones, number thirty-two. Yeah, Steubenville. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Leroy Roker joining here, who's a tro- uh, true freshman who they feel really good about. Jalen McLean, uh, true freshman who they feel really good about. Um, there, we would have had we would have had some depth concerns at safety if mm. Ransom left or if Downs didn't come back. But I'm just saying, like Malik Hart Malik Hartford's a starter. I like that. I just that needs to be said. Malik Hartford's a starter. Yeah. They also bring and it, in, and again, because there are maybe some depth issues at safety, they also bring in Keenan Nelson Jr. via the transfer portal. Um, I, I do believe, no offense, I mean, he's a, he's a depth guy. Um, uh, Lorenzo Styles Jr., the older brother of Sonny Styles Jr., uh, could see time at the cornerback spot this year. Um, uh, young, talented, very, uh, really good recruiting class for corners this year. Bryce West, Aaron Scott, Miles Lockhart, you know, all three of them came in in the spring. I'm already projecting Aaron Scott as Jordan Hancock's backup at the nickel. That might be wrong. That might be Lorenzo Styles Jr. But that's how Kyle and I did it. We, again, this is not an official depth chart. This is Kyle and I's opinion. Um, but very well could be the truth. Yeah. Alvin Simpson Hunt, also a um, uh, his second year at, at Ohio State here. Um, uh, really good. I think he'll be a really good backup. And you know we mentioned Jermaine Matthews Jr. At, t- at times he looks good and other times it's like, yeah, he looked like a true freshman last year, yeah. but he, 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 but he, he was, ma- he made, <laughs> yeah. And he was, yes. But I, I think he, he'd be a solid um, backup for, for Denzel Burke as well. He's, he's going to be, he's going to be an excellent, excellent corner. I would, if we were sitting here right. And of course, Igbenosan wasn't eligible to leave, but maybe, maybe he mm-hmm. transfers, right? I don't know. But if we were sitting, he, but let's say Igmanosin comes back. Let's say Denzel Burke left like we expected him to leave. 
we're sitting here thinking, oh, you know, between Simpson Hunt and Matthews Jr., one of them will win the spot and they'll probably rotate, but we feel really good about it. Like, I see both of those guys, Matthews Jr. and Simpson's Hunt, Simpson Hunt, not as backups, but as Ohio State's defense has a lot of not backups, but starters in waiting. They have mm-hmm. backup starters. Uh, the defense is incredibly deep this year. Um, incredibly talented in the starting spots. And they, they have a two. Ohio State's defense, Ohio State's second string defense. Would be better is better than probably some starting defenses in the Big Ten this year. I'll say it. Ohio State's second string defense. There are teams in the Big Ten that would trade their defense for Ohio State's second string defense. In a heartbeat, yes. Yeah. Dare, dare, I say, dare I say, Jared, you take you take the the second half, the the lower half of the Big Ten. I I, I, mean, I don't know, I I I I don't know. Maybe, I mean, you, you're not you're not it's it you're not bringing a lot of experience. That that's sure. that's that's the issue, sure. obviously. Um, to hmm. say half sure. of the Big Ten feels yeah like a a stretch, maybe. But I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to get get into the uh, the football schedule, but we're we're we had too over much the time hour. talking about the depth chart. We are. Here. I'll just say, look, I'll just say this super super brief overview of the schedule. Notable games going to Eugene, October twelfth to play the. <laughs> No, we're talking to casuals and maybe some people who tuned out. Did, did you know Oregon's in the Big Ten now? That's a thing. Oregon's in the Big Ten now. Um, going to Eugene for a Big Ten game against Oregon, October 17th. Um, Ohio State's non-conference schedule is hot garbo this year. Um, they added it, they added in Marshall uh, last oh, second here. Marshall. Yeah. Um, so they're out of co- so they're out of conference is Akron. Western Michigan. I week Marshall and, Mi- and Michigan state. Ah, uh, uh-huh. ah, uh, ah, um, so yeah, no, notable games, uh, Oregon in Oregon, October 12th, mm-hmm. uh, November 2nd, Penn state at Penn state. Um, not, not, not the white white out for the nope. second. Well, wouldn't be second year in a row. Second, Ohio State Penn State game that's located in Happy Valley in a row. There's got to be a better way of saying that, that it's not the whiteout. Um, mm. Blame Fox. Fox wants that game at noon. Penn State wants the whiteout to be at night. Blame Fox. Um, November 16th. I know it, sh- it shows playing Northwestern, but that game is going to be played in Wrigley Field. Again, if you're a casual and you had to Northwest is going to be playing not zero of their games in their practice facility this year. <laughs> so if you're feeling real nostalgic for 2020 football with no one in the stands, I got good news for you. Um, so, I saw, I saw some, but, but that I saw won't some be Ohio State. That, that won't be Ohio State. That'll be for that, Field. Uh, for that Ohio State Northwestern game. Prices are ridiculous already. Wrigley's an old stadium. I don't feel like it houses a lot of people. Um, and of course, Michigan, uh, November 30th. Um, those are the three. 41. Those are the two. Those are the two losable games on the schedule. I'm not counting. Michigan's going to suck this year. Guys, Michigan is going to suck this year. We did an episode back in February or March called know your enemy the off-season edition but let me let me let me let me real quickly i know we're over in time michigan's defense starting defense really good starting 11 really good really really good 
that's that, it. That's it. That, that, <laughs> that, that, that's it. Um, they, they have no, I won't say they have no depth on defense. Uh, they have no, they're going to, they're going to ride and die on Edwards back on offense. That, that, that offense runs and dies on, on, um, Donovan on Edwards, Edwards there. Yeah. Yep. The, uh, I mean, they, they also have Loveland. He's one of the better tight ends in the country. Yeah. Um, yes. Their offensive line is in the NFL now. Um, they don't have, we did a whole episode on it. You can go listen to it. They have very few positions like safety and tight end, I think is basically it where they have like some actual depth. And that's really about it. Um, they're starting 11 as Kyle pointed out on defense, Michigan's defense has a really good starting 11 guys. They don't have much depth on defense. So you might see a lot of late game collapses from Michigan. You might see, huh, excuse me. You might see the defense have a lot of issues if they don't stay healthy. Um, and you're also going to see a situation in which Michigan is going to struggle to score points this year. They're, they're not going to be very good this year. They sent a lot of people to the NFL. Um, they were a very old team and those guys left. Uh, Mi Michigan's going to lose several games this year. Also, if you, again, if you're, if you've been told there, there's a playoff now, like an actual playoff. Don't know. Don't know if you guys know this, there's an actual playoff now. 12 teams. Mm -hmm. So Ohio State could lose to Oregon. Still make the playoffs pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Now, it's worth noting that Ohio State doesn't have a lot of good games on their schedule this year. So you don't want to lose. I don't want to lose to Penn State and Oregon. It's, so, gosh, I, there, there's so much more I want I want to say. I know we we, we, we typically have the, 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 um, the um, one man Mario rule. I don't yeah. know if that's the case anymore. No, no, no. It is absolutely not the case anymore. It but is honestly, absolutely not. Oh, by the way, but, okay, but, but, but with Ohio State, we, we don't have divisions year, in the Big Ten anymore. But with Ohio State's schedule, especially their, their out of conference, yeah, they may, they may still be a, you only get one Mario man. You, you lose, you lose two, and that's. I don't know. Um, I mean, you're you've you're digging yourself a hole in that situation. Now it's it's worth noting there are no more divisions in the Big Ten. There's no more East, no more West. It's all one big happy mm -hmm. Big Ten now. Yep. So you can, you know, lose to Oregon, play Oregon again in the Big Ten championship game, like. It's not like you lose to Penn State or Michigan State, as has happened in the past. And you're both in the East. And now they have the tie. They, you know, you both maybe have one loss in the Big Ten, but they have the tiebreaker. And now you're not even playing in the Big Ten championship game because all the good teams are in the East. It's not the case anymore. You could, in theory, win all of your games except at Penn state and then turn around and beat Penn state in the big 10 championship game. That this is a realistic thing that can happen now. Um, where it would have, you know, a loss to Penn state may have totally screwed you in the past 10 years. All right, Kyle, uh, we are super duper over. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, Olympics are going on. Olympics are going on right now. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, uh, we have a I, I, guy just, with a just, gold medal already. Is that right? Um, yeah, uh, Hunter Armstrong. Uh, that's his his second Olympic gold medal. He, he was in the four by one hundred meter freestyle in the uh, in swimming. Man, those swimming guys can rack up a lot of medals. Yeah, they can. 
Um, and I, I was looking here. So there are 24 Buckeyes, former and incoming uh, state athletes participating. Okay. How many of them are Americans? How Like what's, what's the Venn diagram of Buckeye and team USA? Uh, good question. I, you know, like if you don't seven, know, seven, seven in the U S okay. And eight, eight in Canada. Okay. Two and in then, France. And then, then just the other. And then one, like, yep. I see Germany, Ireland, uh, Lithuania, Nigeria, Puerto Rico, Spain, and Trinidad and Tobago, 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 Tobago. Uh, all right uh, that's that's pretty cool that's all that's all i gotta say about that um mm -hmm. is that is that kyle's corner that's it that's it all right um it's a, let's tonight, end it. yeah yeah um if again if maybe this is your first time stopping by the sloopcast thanks for stopping by i hope that helped um don't use us D don't don't use us as a pronunciation guide <laughs> but Don't, definitely come come for come for the laughs come for the come for we, the the we discussions do we do national episodes twice a week mm -hmm. during the season we do two ohio state episodes and two national focused episodes every week come on back for some of the national episodes that we do during the week even if you're not an ohio state fan um don't use us as a pronunciation guide and you should know that at the end of every episode um, but this is only on the podcast feed because YouTube's real strict about this stuff. Um, <laughs> but um, if you, uh, God, Kyle, you really just threw me off there. You, what I you do. should all, you should also know that at the end of end of every episode, we pay. We God, Kyle, you you just shattered my momentum. At the end of every episode. Uh, we play a song from a band that is from Ohio. Sometimes they are um, legacy bands. Sometimes they are new bands. We're going to go legacy tonight. Um, again, if you're watching this on YouTube, we can't play the songs on YouTube, but there is a link down in the show notes where you can go listen to it independently if you like. Um, there is a playlist on our YouTube page, youtube.thesloopcast.com. If you're watching this on the Buckeye Huddle site, we also upload to our to a, to a separate uh, Sloopcast specific site. Sloopcast dot the or uh, youtube.thesloopcast.com is is how you get there. Um, on that page, on on that in that area, you can find a playlist that has all of the songs that we play. Uh, so if you want to listen to some more Ohio music, you can go to that playlist and hit shuffle and enjoy. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage, Oh, wait a minute. I didn't say the name of the band yet. Tonight's legacy. So we're doing a legacy band tonight. Um, they're called the new bomb Turks. They're a nineties uh, punk band who were um, popular and popular. Uh, very involved in the Ohio state campus music scene in the nineties. They are called the new bomb Turks. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Uh, once again, these are the new bomb Turks.